PayPal stock. Could this thing be a 15 bagger or a 20 bagger? Could this thing be $900 stocks sometime in the future? My math says possibly. And the way you do it is you just do some Peter Lynch math. You do some Warren Buffett future discounting of intrinsic value. And you might get the same information that I'm getting. So I, I have a decade out here. And if it's really valued richly, it might be a $900 stock in a decade. It might be a $500 stock in a decade. In five years, if you don't, if you don't want to think about a decade, you might think about 2028 and how PayPal could be $400 or back to its old high of $300 fundamentally, not not saying technical analysis is, is saying that at all, because it isn't. Let me show you. If we look at technical analysis, it's saying we're in a bear mode still. If we look at technical analysis, it's saying it could, it could, co it could go lower. So we are not showing any bullish signs in technical analysis. Not even these green candles that we're seeing right now are bullish because they have to take out a high. If you don't take out a high, that's not bullish at all. But fundamentally, once whatever is happening, which is probably some sort of recession, once whatever is done hitting the financials, which PayPal is a financial, PayPal does have financial services, it does have merchant loans to small businesses. And it also has Braintree, which is like, like a platform, a payment platform. Once we go through that, then if we look at, let's go look at uh, Seeking Alpha and look at the analysts who are working at, on this stock, trying to predict the future. That's what their job is. They're saying that the numbers do make sense. The PE for PayPal, forward PE, as in once this year is done, if it reaches these earnings, 494, that's a 12 PE. That's a that's a hard thing to find, a 12 PE for a company that is growing its earnings between 19 and 15%. That's hard to get. And it doesn't have a lot of debt. They have almost 11 billion in cash and a little more than 11 billion in debt. So the enterprise value matches the market cap. That's a good sign. And then if you look at PayPal's earnings and you look at what they're expecting hypothetically could happen with real hard data, as long as we don't go into a deep recession depression, these are the numbers they're expecting. In 10 years, the earnings will be five times larger and the PE potentially in a decade right now is 2.8. Okay, so what do you do with all that and how, how does all that information lead to the crazy talk that I'm talking about? Well, if you look at historically at companies, they will trade at different multiples. So let's jump over to this spreadsheet. They will trade at different multiples. They might trade at a super cheap base value, like 8.5 PE with zero growth and maybe factoring potential debt. They might trade at a historical PE of 15, 15 to 20. We're seeing a lot of 20, 17 on the S&P, but 15 is a historical average PE for the S&P 500 and larger cap companies. If, if you factor in growth, you might, you might skip the 15 PE and use a multiple of growth. So in, in this case, I'm using 18. So instead of 15, you would use a more enthusiastic 18. So then you would use a higher multiple. And in extreme cases, when a company is growing very, very quickly and there's a lot of investor excitement, you would use 
two times the growth rate. So two times the growth rate is 18 times two, and we would call that a peg two, two times the growth rate, Peter Lynch's formula. Uh, Benjamin Graham also speaks about this. But if we spit those formulas, we put those in, in, in here, we put in earnings expectations for this year and next year, it'll give us four valuations for every year. And if we look, I already put the price here, it's around 61 to 62, it was 59 at one point. And it'll give us some more information. If you see the price too low, you can do some growth math. If you see it really high, you can expect to do some more math as well. But look at the range of trading. It can trade anywhere between $41 and $177 for this year. It can trade anywhere between $48 and $200 next year. And then we grow out the earnings, and it gives me a potential valuation in five years and a potential valuation in 10 years. That's how I get these numbers that I'm getting. If those numbers pan out, which they don't always do, those earnings, it's like a living document, it moves. But this is the best that I have to predict the future. I can't predict the future, but, but I can plot it. I can plot what analysts expect, okay? So I actually, I am now interested. The last time I made the, a video, I think it was like 70 something dollars, but now, now, it's down to 61 and let's say it even goes to, to 40, okay? It starts to get really ridiculous unless something horrible is happening, which does happen. But they're already pricing that in. They're already chopping at PayPal at an extreme amount. Do I think it can't go lower? No, I, I, I've seen some crazy stuff. But when you look at PayPal compared to the market, they, they are really smacking it. So I have also tangible value They've got tangible value of seven. So worst case, we know that there's at least $7 worth of value in the stock and they don't have an excess amount of debt. But I am very interested if I, I have a, another spreadsheet where I track about 40, 45 companies and then I rank them by peg ratio. That's one of the metrics by earnings yield. Look at the forward earnings yield of PayPal. It's earning 8%. It's beating treasuries, just like Warren Buffett likes. I'm sure he wouldn't invest in PayPal because it doesn't have a big enough moat. But this is what PayPal earns right now. It's, it's June. We're almost, we've, he's, they've almost earned about half of that. Peg ratio below one. Growth rate 18, a very respectable, healthy growth rate and potentially the future price, I calculate potentially, this one says $870 in 10 years, potentially 61 right now. That would be a 14 bagger right now. And then here I just track the potential entry prices. If it does get to 43, that would be a 20 bagger. So isn't that well? I think I will give away this other spreadsheet that I, I have. Uh, I will put a link in the bottom. And if you want to put in your own analysis, you're welcome to do so. If you, here, Here's an example. If we put in $10,000 $10, in five years, that could be 66 k In 10 years, 152 If it goes to 40, let's say $44, and then we, and then we put in the 10 k this turns into a hundred grand or 92,000 in five years, potentially, and 211,000. That's a 20 bagger return in 10 years. So that's why I love the spreadsheets. Let me know, let me know if you agree or disagree with what's happening in PayPal, positive free, free cash flow. Let me know if you have distant, different thoughts. If you disagree, if you completely hate PayPal, uh, from what I heard, looking at the articles, FedNow, the CBDC type stuff, is a competitor to PayPal. Also, Apple Pay is a threat to PayPal. That's why people are scared. 
also the uh, merchant loans that they're making, the default rate has gone from like low two to three to eight so far. Is, is am, am I missing anything? Is there anything I'm missing? I know they're they're also woke. They uh, didn't they didn't they uh, stop the truckers from from using their PayPal's something like that. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing something, or you know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's let's discuss it. Talk to you soon. Cheers.